live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2019. Brought to you by Informatica. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World 2019. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. We have two guests for this segment. We have Charlie Emer. He is the Senior Director, Data Management and Governance Strategy at Honeywell. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And Randy Mickey, Senior Vice President, Global Professional Services at Informatica. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. Charlie, I want to start with you. Honeywell is a, is a household name, but tell us a little bit about uh, the business now and about your role at Honeywell. Think about it this way. You know, when I joined Honeywell, even before I knew Honeywell, all I thought was thermostats, <laughs> and you know, that's what people that's think about audience. Honeywell. But Honeywell is much bigger than that. Look, if you go back to the Industrial Revolution, back in, I think, 20s, we talked about new things. Uh, Honeywell was involved from the beginning, making things. But we think this, now, this year and moving forward in this age, Honeywell is looking at it as the new industrial revolution. What is that? Because Honeywell makes things. We make aircraft engines, we make aircraft parts, we make everything. I mean, you know, Household goods, household uh, uh, sensors, all types of sensors. We make things. So when we say the new industrial revolution is about the internet of things, who best to participate? Because we make those things. So what we are doing now is what we call IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things. Now that is what Anywhere is about. And that's the direction we are heading. Connecting those things that we make and making them more advancing, sort of making life easier for people, improving people's quality of life by making those things that we make more usable for them and durable. Now you are, you have a, you're a broad platform customer of Informatica. I'd love to hear a little bit from both of you about the relationship and how it's evolved over the years. Look, we, we look at Informatica as supporting our fundamentals, our data fundamentals. You know, for us to be successful in what we do, we need to have good quality data, well governed, well managed, and secure. Not only that, and also accessible. And we're utilizing using Informatica almost end to end. We are using Informatica for our data movement, our ETL platform. We're using Informatica for our data quality. We're using Informatica for our master data management. And we have Informatica beginning now to explore and use Informatica big data management capabilities. And uh, uh, more to that, we also utilize Informatica professional services to help us realize those values uh, from the platforms that we have deployed. IOT and IIOT, industrial IOT, has really been a hot trend. Industrial implies factories, building, big things, planes, wind farms, we've heard that before. But what's interesting is, these are pre-existing physical things. These plants and all these uh, uh, manufacturing. When you add digital connectivity to it and power, it's going to change what they were used to be doing to new things. So how do you see industrial IoT changing or creating a builder culture of new things? Because there's connect first, get a power and connectivity, 5G's coming around, Wi-Fi 6 is around the corner. This is going to light up. All these devices that might have had battery power or older databases, what's the modernization of these industrial environments going to look like in your, in your view? You know, first of all, let me give you an example of the value that is coming with this connectivity. Think of it if you are an aircraft engineer. Back in the day, a plane landed in Las Vegas. You went and inspected it physically and checked in your manual when to replace a part. But now Honeywell is telling you that we are connecting directly to the mechanic who is going to, the, to inspect the building, to the vehicle, sorry, the plane, and there will be a, sort of on their, in their palms, they can see and say, wait a minute, this part, I'm expected to, you know, one more flight and I should replace this part. 
Now we are advising you now, doing some uh, predictive analytics and telling you when this part could even fail. We're telling you when to replace it. So we're saying, okay, if the, the plane is going to move, fly from here to California, prepare the mechanics in California when it lands with the part so they can replace it. That's already safety one-on-one. -on -one. So guaranteeing safety, sort of improving the, 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 the equity uh, or the viability of the products that we produce. We're not moving away from, from continuing to build things yeah. because people still need those things built. Safety products, you know, but we're just making them more. We've heard uh, supply chains are real low-hanging fruit on this, managing the efficiency so there's no waste. Yes, yes. Having someone ready with the, the plane is efficient. Yes. That's kind of low-hanging fruit. Any ideas on some of the uh, creativity of new applications? that's going to come from the data, because now, as you start getting historical data from the connections, right. that's where I think it can, think can get interesting here. You know, maybe new jobs, new types of planes, new passenger types. I th see, we, we, are, we are not only using the data to improve on the products and, 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 and help us uh, improve customer, customer needs, you know, uh, design new products, create new products, but we are also monitorizing that data allowing other, our partners, to also get some insights from that data to develop their own products. So creating sort of a, an environment where there is a partnership between those who use our, 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 our products. And guess what, most of the people who use our products, our products are actually inputs into their products. So we, have, we, are, we are a lot more a business to business uh, uh, company than a B2C. Uh, so I see a lot of um, uh, value in us being able to share that, that, that intelligence, that insight in our data at a more scientific, at a level of scientific discovery for, for our partners. Randy, I want to bring you into the conversation Thanks. a little bit here. <laughs> so you, as, as you're, you lead Informatica's professional services, right. uh, I'm interested to hear how what you, your work with Honeywell and, then, and how it translates to the other companies that you engage with. Sure. Honeywell is such a unique co company, 130 years of innovation, inventor of so many important things that we use in our everyday lives. That's not your average company, but can you talk a little bit about the mat, the, their journey and, and how it translates to other clients? Sure, well you could tell listening to Charlie how strategic data is as well as our relationship and it's not just about evolution from their perspective, but also you mentioned the historicals and taking advantage of where you've been and where you need to go. So Charlie's made it very clear that we need to be more than just a partner with products, we need to be a partner with outcomes for their business. So hence professional services relationship with Honeywell and Charlie, the organization, you know, started off more straightforward. Um, you mentioned ETL, and you know, we started off 2000, I believe, so right. 19 years ago. So it's been a journey already and a lot more to go. But over the years, you can kind of tell using data in different ways within the organization, delivering business outcomes, it's been at the forefront and we're viewed strategically, not just with the products, but professional services as well, to make sure that we can continue to be there, both in an advisory capacity, but also in driving the right outcomes. And uh, something that Charlie even said this morning was, that we were kind of in the fabric. You know, we have a couple of team members that are just like Honeywell team members. You know, we're in the fabric of the organization. I think that's really critically important for us to really drive the outcomes that Charlie and the business need. And data is so critical to their business that so you have to be not only from a professional services but as a platform. Yes. This is kind of where the value comes from. And I can't help but you know just conjure up images of space because when you think about like I watch my kids, I watch space is now hot. People love space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you see you know SpaceX landing their rocket boosters to the finest precision. You got Blue Origin out there with Amazon. You got and Honeywell. Honeywell's, uh, Honeywell's in every man yes. NASA mission. You have a renaissance of activity going on in a modern way. This is exciting. This is critical. Without data, you can't do it. Absolutely, I mean, uh, it, it, it also, sometimes we, we take a break. I'm, I'm sort of, a, I'm a fundamentalist. I tell everybody the excitement is great, but let's take a break. Let's make sure we, we make sure the fundamentals are in place. That we actually know what is it, what are those critical data that we need to be tracking and managing. Because you don't just have to manage the whole world of data. There's so much of it, and believe me, there's not all value in everything. You have to be critical about, uh, strategic about it. What are the critical data that we need to manage, govern, and actually, because it's, very ex it's expensive to manage the critical data. So we look at a value tree as well and say, okay, if, if we, as Anywell, want to be able to be also an efficient business enabler, we have to be efficient 
inside. So there's looking out and there's also looking inside to make sure that we are in the right place, we are understanding our data, our people understand data. Talking about our relationship with IPS, Informatica Professional Services, one of, the, one of the things that we're looking at is that, you know, getting the right people, the, 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 the engineers, the people to actually realize that, okay, we have the platform, we've heard of Claire, we heard of all those stuff, but where are the people to actually go and do the small, the, the, the real stuff, like actually programming, writing the code, connecting things, you know, and, and making it work? It's not easy because the, the technology is going faster than the capabilities in terms of uh, uh, people, uh, skills. So what the partnership we're, 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 we're building with Informatica Professional Services and I'm, we're beginning to nurture is such that we, don't, we're, we want to be in a position where anyone doesn't have to worry so much about the churn in terms of getting people and, and retraining and retraining and retraining. We want to have a reliable partner who is also moving with the, 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 the research and development and the progress around the products that we bought so we can have that, that, that success. So that partnership with IPS is... Yeah, the skill gaps we've been talking about, and she's gonna, I know she's going to ask the next one, but I'll just <laughs> jump in, um, because I know there's two threads here. One is, there's a new generation coming into the workforce. Right. Okay, and they're all data full. They've been, they've built, they've been experiencing the digital lifestyle, um, the engineering programs to data, it's all changing. What are some of the new expertise that, that really stand out when evaluating candidates, well, both from the Informatica side also in Huntingwell, what's the ideal candidate look like? Because there's no real four year degree anymore. Well, Berkeley just had their first class of data analytics. Uh, that's the that's new, new generation. But what are some of those skills? You don't, there's no degree out there. You can't really get a degree in data yet. Yet. Do, do you want to tackle that one? Sure. Guess, yeah, okay. I, I can just kick off with what we're looking at and how we're evolving. First of all, the, uh, the new graduates are extremely innovative and exciting to bring on. You know, we've been in business for 26 years, so we have a lot of folks that have done some great work. Our retention's through the roof. So it's fun to meld the folks that have been doing things for you know, over 10, 15 years to see what the folks have new ideas about how to leverage data. The thing I can underscore is it's business and technology. And I think the new grads get that really, really well in terms of data. To them, data is not something that's stored somewhere in the cloud or in a box. It's something that's practically applied for business outcomes, and I think they get that right out of school. And I think they're getting that message loud and clear. A lot of hybrid programs, we do hire direct from college, but we also hire experience hires. And we look for people that have had degrees that are balanced. So the traditional just see us only degrees, are very, still very relevant, but we're seeing a lot of people do hybrids because they know they want to understand supply chain along with CS and data. And there are programs around just data and how organizations can really capitalize on that. And also we're hearing too that having domain expertise is actually just as important as having the coding skills because you got to know what an outcome looks like before you collect Absolutely. the data. You got you to know what checkmate is if you're going to play chess. Right? Yes. That's the old expression, right? So I think, I think people with the domain, both the hybrid experience or, or, or expertise are more valuable to the company. Because uh, um, maybe from the product perspective, in, for building products, you could be just a scientist, a, a code, code. But when you come to Honeywell, for example, we want you to be able to understand what our, pro think about materials. We want to be under understand what are the products, what are the materials that we, we, we use, what are the inputs that we have to put into these products. Now, a, a simple thing like a data scientist deciding what the right, correct value of an attribute should be. That's not something that a code, because you know code, you can determine. You have to understand domain, the domain you're dealing with. You have to understand the context. So that comes the question of context management. Understanding the context and bringing it together. That, 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 is the, that is a big challenge. And I can tell you there's a large, there's a big gap there. The gap, indeed. Understand the business and the, and the data too. Yes. Charles, Randy, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. It's been a great thank conversation. You. Thank, thank you. you. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. You are watching theCUBE.